the organizer for having invited us to this very interesting event. Um, actually, I have something like an hour and a half talk, but I've been told I'll have a little bit less than an hour and a half. So I would probably skip some of the slides uh, or the segments in this style of presentation. Um, this presentation is online and you can browse and look for all the tiny little details that I would probably skip during the presentation. So I'm going to talk about the roadmap for um, the Swiss Academic Open Cloud Infrastructure. I'm here on behalf of SWING, which is uh, an association composed of up to 15 uh, academic members scattered around Switzerland. Uh, started already in 2008 with the objective of, say, promoting and uh, ensuring the competitiveness of the Swiss research by fostering collaboration and resource sharing. said, uh, I would probably skip ahead uh, some of the details. Um, looking at the audience and uh, looking at also the list of the participants, I normally give a talk to the, academic, to the non researchers, so we have a slightly different focus. If there's a message that I would like most of you to retain today, especially the vendors and the service providers, is um, that we were trying to, what we are trying to do here is try to organize the, um, the Swiss uh, research infrastructure, and let me emphasize the research infrastructure, um, to prepare for a better adoption of most of the services that you have been presenting today. The, what we would like to do is to um, allow a, program, a more programmatic uh, adoption of uh, uh, the cloud infrastructures or the cloud model, and we're using the, the, the concept of cloud in terms of services, in terms of our business model, and in terms of, of course, the technology. To, uh, to provide a, um, a more comprehensive support for the entire research uh, landscape. So I said, um, why are we doing this? Let's see. Well, the, the, the current uh, research landscape in Switzerland is very fragmented. And uh, what I'm gonna present here in this, this tiny little segment is definitely an oversimplification of the, let's say, the real scenario, but just to give you an idea of uh, um, why we would like to try to organize the support for the research infrastructure. So the first point is that the research infrastructure is planned is jointly. And by this, I mean that every provider tends to plan the, um, the way uh, it organizes the research infrastructure in-house by looking at its own use cases, by looking at its own individual stakeholders, and there's a little coordination among the different providers. And this has, tends to have a, a relatively big impact for the end users. And in our case, the end users are the researcher. Now, again, this is an oversimplification, but this use case is not far from the, from the reality, and it opens more often than we think. So the, the, the researcher tends to develop and try out their own things locally, and most of the time on their machine. And they develop their own simulation tools and they analyze their own data on their own machine, on the tiny little infrastructure they have under their own desk, pretty much. And then, of course, the, at a certain point they do realize that the amount of data they need to process, the, 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 the size of the simulation they need to run is much bigger than they can afford to sustain on their own machine. So they tend to escalate up to the local infrastructure provider. And the local infrastructure provider normally has uh, an adequate sized uh, uh, computational infrastructure that depends on the, on the institution, let's put it in this way. Um, but it, it has been planned on a very specific set of use cases. It has been planned with uh, very specific um, ideas on how this infrastructure could be used. And of course, they do provide a certain level of support, but they have to, the users have to stay with all the policies and the regulations that the provider has uh, for, access, for, the, for, the, for the provided infrastructure. And this is, this is nothing wrong in the sense that every provider has to somehow um, guarantee the functioning of the infrastructure. So there's nothing wrong to have firewall policies. There's nothing wrong to have access rules. There's nothing wrong to have fair share among the resources. 
But the problem, if we look at it from the, from the research perspective, this is yet another burden uh, that limits somehow the possibility they do have to reach their scope, which is analyze the data, run the simulation, make a publication at the end. And in fact, the, 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 the scenario, the research landscape is, uh, is changing quite rapidly and it is becoming more and more common that research groups from within the same institution, from different institutions, needs to share knowledge and resources and bring that data, bring that uh, representation of uh, molecules that needs to be tried out, bring that methods, methodologies that needs to be somehow uh, uh, shared. And it happens quite often that the, the current infrastructure that each of the group has at his disposal has not been planned uh, to allow this kind of sharing. So what's happened? Oh, then I buy my own. If I, if I can, I, I rather buy my own tiny little infrastructure that is sized for, at least for the, for the problem that I try to solve now. I put it in, in, uh, under my desk again or in a part of the machine room that uh, I have access to and then I run it the way I like it. It's suboptimal but at least I obtain my objective. Or I team up with, uh, with uh, other groups that are trying to do similar things and then we form a tiny little communities and then we try to s somehow develop a platform that supports our use cases. And the other problem that we've seen within the research infrastructure landscape is that the support for the, for the researcher is somehow not organized. Again, the local IT provides, tends to provide basic support I can help you um, compile a code, I can explain you how to write the, your MPI directives, but nothing more than that. In fact, IT has limited capacity for this, so there's, of course this is also uh, a challenge for them. But then it means that the, most of the, well, a large fraction of the complexity of using or, let's say, exploiting the available infrastructure for the use cases that they need to that they need to support is left to the research groups. And the research group have zero interest in you know, developing perspective solutions, things that uh, are scalable, robust, uh, and that can be adopted by others. They just focus on the tiny little use case they need to sort out because this is where their interest lays. And then you end up with a plethora of uh, tiny little solutions, tiny little applications that have been developed to tackle an individual use case. And because the group has already invested quite some effort into this application, this use case, those tiny little ad hoc solutions tend to become the de facto standard. So it's, uh, it happens quite often that a research group base a relatively large fraction of their support infrastructure on things that have been written by a PhD student 25 years ago and nobody knows how to modify it and uh, everybody hopes that will still work. And of course, the community tend to be a little bit more organized. They are much more influential at the funding agency level, even though they have to negotiate uh, every time the, the funds to support uh, the, the, their own organization and the, their own organized infrastructure. They indeed build a support infrastructure, but they tend to focus on their own use cases. And there is no national strategy, so there is no uh, an attempt to um, put all those efforts into a coherence. And then, also the funding model is suboptimal. Let's put it in this way. I won't enter too much into the details, but the let's put it in this way: the frequency with which the the current uh, research activity is changing is higher than the possibility that an individual research group has to allocate funds to buy the next infrastructure. Most of the time, is also very different from what the resource provider uh, can 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 authorize. Uh, but it's a matter of fact uh, that uh, the, the needs that a research group might have in order to exploit a certain new methodology or analyze new data are somehow actual and they struggle with the idea of how do I find the, how do I find resources and the money to support this. So this is where this association steps in and try to somehow make the case that uh, by having an organized program 
where the entire research infrastructure is organized, is planned, uh, together with the research community, um, um, will make somehow the, um, the adoption of new standards, the development of community services, and the planning of the next generation infrastructure more optimal. And we do, we plan to do through three main pillars. Um, the social engagement part is, um, well, I don't have to explain you how critical and important it is that uh, you reach out your customers and explain and make the case that the product you're trying to sell is somehow optimal for them. Um, in this case, the idea would be um, to establish a mechanism for the providers and the researcher to communicate a little bit more on the type of issues, on the type of problems, and on the type of planning that they would need to have. And uh, of course, it's, um, I don't know whether this will end up in the equivalent of a Swiss academic social network, but the idea really would be to create a certain uh, feeling of, a, of uh, belonging into uh, the, the, the Swiss academic network. This will also have ease uh, the, the, um, the dissemination of the information and the propagation of the, of the new trends and technologies that we would like to push to a certain extent. Of course, the innovation, as I said, the, the, the critical issue here is to make sure that the community have a mechanism to express their needs the moment they need to have, uh, they, they have these needs and uh, uh, to provide uh, solutions, to provide um, an audience for discussing these needs, to provide an audience to turn these needs into an infrastructure requirements and to provide a solution. So the innovation is, the, is an idea of creating a, a mechanism to um, collect challenges, this is what we call challenges, to discuss and evaluate challenges within the community and to favor the emergence of solution by the discussion, by promoting a discussion between the um, infrastructure providers and, research, and researchers as well. We think also this is a, probably a, an efficient mechanism to favor the adoption of agreed solutions and avoid, the idea will not be to standardize everything into a single solution, but to at least minimize the duplication of the effort induced simply by the fact that communities are not aware of uh, um, what the others are offering. Most of the time they simply think that because they're doing a different science, it's completely different from, from their own, so their own solutions will not map well with, uh, uh, with what they're trying to do. And then the service portal is where the, let's say the, the, the resources are effective, made available, and here we're working on two pillars. This is where we are a little bit more active in the sense that we have the luxury of uh, having uh, national funded projects to establish, uh, let's say, seeds of this, uh, of this type of approaches from the infrastructure point of view and from the community support point of view. So at the infrastructure level, we are deploying or we're favoring the adoption of uh, a federated infrastructure as a service inf uh, model. Um, all the partners that do, do collaborate with us are deploying OpenStack. So we are simply trying to, to make sure that we do present this federation of uh, OpenStack instances scattered around a few partners in Switzerland. Not as a single infrastructure, as I said, I, I couldn't find a better wording for this, but the federation doesn't really happen at the service level, it, it happens at the access level. So we allow users to access the various instances of, uh, of this infrastructure based on a use case uh, policy. So we evaluate the use cases and we decide which one fits better, but the already having the advantage of having a common, uh, a common, a common interoperability layer, which is OpenStack in this case, greatly simplify our task. And then we stress on the open interfaces because um, I would say the majority, if not all, the use cases that we, we would like to support, we would like to somehow organize under this, uh, under this effort um, make use of the of uh, the infrastructure service uh, infrastructure uh, from the programmatic point of view. So, for us, having um, open interfaces and having a standardized API, it's a must uh, um, because it also simplifies greatly the portability uh, of uh, all the solutions that we have developed and we will develop and the community will develop. And also, it greatly favored the, the, say the adoption 
of uh, or the let's say the bursting towards uh, the, the um, non-academic providers, they, the non-academic provider will also be an integral part of this of this effort. We'll, we'll get to that. Of course, the single sign-on it's uh, it's a uh, it's a wish that uh, we inherit also from from the, the previous infrastructure project in Switzerland. We already have. Uh, um, a shibboleth based uh, authentication and authorization infrastructure that is available on all uh, academic institutions. So basically every member of the Swiss uh, Academia has already uh, an identity within the system and we would like to exploit this as much as possible in order to allow them access to this type of to, um, uh, to the cloud services. Now, this might happen at a different level and uh, for the time being and for the scope of the project we're working on, we're trying to take some, let's say, simplifications. So we're not, for example, we're not trying to enter into the discussion on how to modify or how to extend Keystone in order to accept the, the SAML assertion that comes from Washibolic authentication, but at least we're trying to make sure that the access to the, to the web interfaces or to the registration portal is done through the, the um, through the um, switch AI infrastructure in a way that we try to minimize as much as possible the perception of, uh, of a disjointed infrastructure at the user level. And of course we, we also need to have an operational infrastructure. This has nothing to do with the uh, operation procedures that the large providers have, but at least um, it's a mechanism for us to push a little bit on the best practices among the providers provider in, in our case. It's, it's a mechanism to at least allow a minimal consistency level um, for the end users and for the developers. It's not just a matter of uh, having the, the OCCI interfaces available or making sure that you have, uh, um, that you can always use the, the very same VM uh, format, file format, but it's also to, to guarantee that the behavior of the underlying infrastructure is somehow consistent irrespective of where you're deploying your, your solution. And of course it allows us to extrapolate a little bit on the services, the application marketplace. If we imagine this, uh, this scenario where, the, um, where, we have, where we do have a federation of providers having an application marketplace greatly simplify the task for the users or for the developers to look for already established solutions. The tenant management, well this is also another thing we will explore in the future, having the possibility to uh, give a responsibility to a tenant uh, a responsible person to decide who will be allowed to that particular tenant and uh, what kind of uh, access uh, uh, he can have within the uh, within his own tenant provided that the tenant is the let's say the closest concept we can get uh, to map a group um, an organization or um, um, groups from different uh, different uh, institutions that want to collaborate with each other. And of course, in a county repository, that doesn't mean that uh, the, the billing will be done on a single place, but at least to have a, um, a mechanism to um, have a Swiss-wide um, map of the usage of the infrastructure for the, uh, for the different tenants. If, uh, again, we allow this concept of a federation, and if, again, we try to push for uh, collaboration between groups of different universities. We also would like to, to have um, an aggregated information of how this group has been behaving on this type of, uh, of, the, of the entire infrastructure and how this group has been using the resources that have been given for a given project. And then the other concept is the community support. As I said, the, the majority of the, of the research groups are not really interested in orchestrating VMs, are not really interested in, uh, in tuning the network configuration for uh, their own use cases, are more interested in processing the data and analyzing the data running their own simulation. Of course, this is, as I said, this is an oversimplification, but there's a very large fraction of the research community that is not really interested in learning or making the effort in learning the new technologies because, uh, do not forget, they already made quite some effort in learning how to use the resources that the local infrastructure provider is providing them. And this uh, concept of a collaborative distributed support um, fundamentally lever the, the services and the idea of cloud infrastructure, even though uh, we, we see it from, from a federated 
uh, modern point of view because uh, it, um, it levered the concept of uh, a uniform access interface, in this case the infrastructure as a service, and allows us to guarantee that whatever type of solution we will implement for a given use case or for a given group, it could be reused, extended or reconsidered for another group, for another type of provider within this network. And that also allows us to have, um, let's say, a national support program because we do not need any longer, or at least uh, it's not, uh, doesn't have to be, um, the, the, support, the support activity doesn't have to be tightly coupled with the resource provider as it is of today with the current uh, uh, local IT services because we can make the assumption the infrastructure has a certain level of homogeneity. And the idea of this uh, collaborative distributed support is to, to engage again directly with the research groups and have them um, work together with the support to develop the type of solution that needs to be uh, developed for um, exploiting these cloud services from one side, but also to promote and to somehow um, in, uh, encourage the adoption of those type of services and to develop progressively but slowly, as it's always in the academia, the, the culture of uh, using this type of infrastructure for their own uh, use cases. So again, what are we aiming for? Um, we're aiming for an interoperable, I'm done, oh, um, very quickly. Um, for an interoperable cloud-based uh, infrastructure, the idea, as I said, would be to uh, guarantee this as, a, as, a, as the starting level, as the common aggregation level. Um, we'll need, we will have um, users that will be allowed to access their own local infrastructure, infrastructure between different institutions and also external, the, the, the commercial one. And this is critical because we've seen it today. I mean, um, I come from the University of Zurich and I'm not part of the informatic but we are infrastructure provider and we do operate our own cloud infrastructure because the informatics service doesn't. Um, and we're trying to develop some know-how in order to um, consult the research groups to use this type of infrastructure and to profit from the service, from the flexibility that comes with this type of infrastructure. And this is a, a, a strong effort that we somehow need to balance with the operation of the infrastructure itself. But my core business and our main interest is not to operate the infrastructure, it's to support as better as possible the users. And uh, if, um, if, a, if a provider can allow me to access its own infrastructure with the same type of interfaces and with the same type of, let's say, services that I can operate in-house, much better, I hope, um, the, the, the transition from the, from the in-house infrastructure to an external one, it's, uh, it's gonna be relatively transparent for the end user. Let's not enter into discussion of how we protect the data and how we move the data. But if we, if we look at it in terms of uh, the solutions that we do develop, the orchestration of the VM, the mapping of the VM into the processing of the data and everything like this, this is completely transparent. The fact is that we're really aiming for a cloud-enabled computational research because we don't know when, but it's likely that it will happen that the vendor will probably take over the, the let's say, the metal part of the research infrastructure. And uh, having already a research community that is educated, has cultured with, uh, with the idea of using services at, 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 um, with this type of interfaces, with this type of services, um, um, it, it greatly simplify the adoption of uh, um, and the migration of the entire infrastructure towards the provider towards an external provider. Of course, uh, the idea is also to um, because we might uh, help the communities to develop uh, in uh, to develop services that might be adopted by different groups within the same community, but different groups from different communities. We also favor the clustering of several groups into, into, into community of interest. And this is a great advantage for, let's say, for the Swiss research landscape because it provides an easier way to, um, to collect the information, the feedback and the requirement from those type of communities. And again, 
um, for us it, it becomes critical as uh, together with the provisioning of the, the infrastructure and together with the, the idea that uh, um, the, um, this cloud model should, uh, should provide a standardization layer for the, the, um, uh, for the, for the research uh, landscape is also to complement this with the national support program in order to um, better provide um, a full education model that will, um, will, will serve the research community from now on and will also help a little bit the, the, um, the, the growing of the, of the mentality for the, uh, for the researcher on using these type of services. I think that concludes uh, I think I, I conclude here the, my speech because, uh, as I said, this, uh, this presentation is online and you can see much more of the details uh, that, I skip, that I skip because it's probably a little bit more tuned towards the, uh, toward the research to try to emphasize a little bit uh, their own point of view. I hope that uh, you should retain, the, as I said in the beginning, the message that we're trying to somehow organize the community to be more prepared for uh, the adoption of uh, uh, those cloud models in a broader sense. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions.